The Reds rise, red lights, green lights, and we are racing in the last round of the World Supersport Championship. Shambon got a good start, jumped away, and will lead them into Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. So the early advantage goes to the man who is in the box seat in the World Championship. The leader on points is out and leading the race, and right behind him as well, a couple of Ducatis, Casoli and also Ruben Zaus right there beside, behind him in second and third, and it is Zaus who for the moment leads Paolo Casoli, but quite obviously Zaus will be under writing instructions to help Casoli out at all possible. That's definitely the case there, and uh, well, Casoli, Casoli sorry, may well need a hand from Zaus, but uh, well, I guess Zaus might have to get going and and uh, track down Stefan Chambon out in front at the moment, but Casoli's right on the back of Ruben Zao, so he's in a bit of a hurry too. In around about seventh position behind Pierre Reba at the moment, but it is out in front, Paolo Casoli, just like that, who went past Stefan Chambon, then he made a mistake getting out on the wet part of the track, and Chambon comes back underneath him to reassume the lead on board the Suzuki as they come around the last corner for the very first time get by another look down the inside and yeah he's got through on Chambon he has as they come around Paddock Hill Bend for the second time and now Zaus looking up the inside of Chambon well I tell you what there's one way to ensure you can <laughs> win enough points this race and that's take out the man on the number one bike he might not do it but well on purpose but I tell you what you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't be past Ruben Zaus uh, trying a little bit too hard and just in one of those racing incidents of there course you go. bringing down the main opposition he has been all over him, might the proverbial cheap suit. And on this occasion, up the inside, getting into Paddock Hill Bend, and there you go. So if they stop the race now, it would have been, of course, there's not enough laps to stop the race and for the points to count, but that is the exact scenario that Paolo Casoli needs. He needs to win and have Stefan Chambon finish in fourth place or worse. And, of course, Chambon most obviously is very well aware of that scenario. Jamie Whitten, the fastest lap, he is taking onto the back almost of Carl Muggeridge. And uh, Pierre Reba's just gone past Ruben Zaus. Bon Tempe's rounded up Chambon, so it's all playing into Casali's hands at the moment. No turning for him to see that the red, white and green Castro Honda of Pierre Reba was in second place and not the red Ducati of his teammate. Well, you can see that Ruben Zaus is definitely out. Carl Muggeridge and also Jamie Whittam have gone past Stefan Chambon, so the scenario gets better all the time for Paolo Casoli, but Casoli still needs to win the race and have Chambon finish fourth or worst. If Casoli finishes in second place and he needs Chambon to oh. finish all the way back in eighth, Reba crashes out going around Surtees, lost the front end and crashes out while he was dueling for second place. There is Stefan Chambon, nudged back two positions by both Carl Muggeridge and Jamie Whittam. So Chambon is back into fifth now. He was sixth up until Pair Reba crashed out just moments ago. A bonus for Stefan Chambon. It's like a game of tennis. The ball keeps going back and cross force across the net. Should know uh, Brands Hatch very well and should be able to do it and oh, Stefan Chambon. Chambon. Chambon is out. Something has gone wrong with the Corona Extra Suzuki and he's out of the race. He is out of the race and now Paolo Casoli only needs to pick up 12 points to be this year's world champion. So fourth place or better will be enough for Paolo Casoli. That is disastrous luck for Stefan Chambon. Well, Stefan Chambon had it given to him basically on a... Uh R6 Alpha Technic platter in uh, the German round at Oschersleben last race and uh, well just as quickly it was taken away. Unbelievable luck he had faded back through the field over the last couple of laps and quite obviously was struggling to keep on terms with them after leading the opening moments of the race but there he is, he pulls out of the race. The Corona Extra Suzuki has let him down. There will be confirmation that Chambon KO'd. That says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> and there's Stefan Chambon there, and he's probably more than likely doing exactly what Warren Smith just said, and that is probably bawling his eyes out. Oh, it's a terrible sight. Tears in the eyes, obviously, there of Stefan Chambon. There's the team owner, Francis Batter who runs a very good ship in the Corona Extra camp, and uh, I'm sure he's just as shattered for his man, who was... Meanwhile, Carl Muggeridge and Bon Tempe are coming up, so I think it'll be a five-way match here in a few laps, and uh, 
Well, Carl Muggett. Graphic. Christian Kellner coming on to terms as well very quickly with his front. Oh, oh Zouse. Zouse. Give him the finger. He's given it to uh, Jamie Whittam. That was just a pass. It looked like down the outside. So, a pit well, I'll tell you what, there's about 25 different scenarios to this uh, race finish and someone has gone down and that was just off the back of that second bunch i think warren well, so the moment i look down and try and work out that exact point scenario someone goes hurtling off the circuit the front five i'm sure are still all there in fact they are there it is who is that it's not jamie whittam it's uh, somebody else who is that man racing away I'm trying to pick up who it is i just can't quite make it out what's well, the bell guard yamaha rider perhaps it was the uh, the teammate Mayo Merigali of Jamie Whittam who's crashed out. Now, by my calculations, if York Toyshet wins the race and Paolo Casoli finishes in third place, that would be enough for York Toyshet to win the world championship this year. Muggeridge is right back there with them. Look at Widom trying to go around the outside of Ruben's house. Muggeridge cuts to the inside as well. Three abreast as they come across the line. And it is Carl Muggeridge who went yes. from fourth to second. Up Brabham straight. A great move by the Australian. And it is Carl Muggeridge looking at the inside of Paolo Casoli and into the lead. He takes the lead away from the Italian. So the Australian on the unsponsored privateer Honda leads this class field at Brands Hatch. What a ride. And just going away and uh, Jamie Whittam nearly, nearly, nearly got by as well, but uh, couldn't quite get the Ducati at the end of the straight there. And, uh, well, as you said, plenty of scores to settle and here's another one. No, it's not. It's Christian Kellner. It was Kellner who now goes up the inside of Paolo Casoli and uh, if he's going to live up to his word and try and help his teammate out after torpedoing him at the Oschersleben round, he will do everything he can to now hold up Paolo Casoli and let Toy Shed come through and get in front of Casoli himself. So it's all happening up at the front of the field, though. Here is Rubens house underneath Carl Muggeridge. So the Spaniard goes back to the lead. Have you ever seen a race like this? It's such an important <laughs> race to decide a championship. It's unbelievable. Well, now what's Rubens house going to do? Is he going to try to slow the field down or is he just going to pull a pin and off for the goodies? Well, Zaus surely has to try and slow the field down and let Casoli try and work his way back through them. But out in front of Casoli, he's got Carl Muggeridge in second place, Jamie Whittam in third place, and Pierre Giorgio Bontempi is right there in the mix as well in fourth place in front of Casoli, who has faded back to fifth after leading just a couple of laps ago. Well, I think Carl Muggeridge is about to get uh, Rubens out, which he is any oh, game down leg out. Carl Muggeridge Give him a kick, he's give him doing away. him away. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen more fingers in a day at the cricket. <laughs> this is unbelievable. This gets passed gone by, by Jamie Kellner's Whittam. Up the Here inside. comes Kellner. You're right, they go into third place. Commentary in stereo here. And <laughs> why wouldn't it be if we had five commentators? We'd all be talking at the same time. Big super sport racing is all about at its very best. Christian Kellner up the inside of Carl Muggeridge. So Kellner into the lead now. How many leaders can we have? Uh, talk of the scenario. One, uh, Kellner up the inside side of Jamie Whittam so he's moved up to second at the moment the start finish line there here is Toy, Toy Shed, Shed looking at the inside and moves into third place Toy Shed getting closer to the world championship all the time remembering it's his teammate in front of him so he would quite obviously surely he would let him go through and move up into second position but for the time being Toy Shed has to hold off Jamie Winner but Carl Muggeridge what a ride from the Australian out in front while all this is happening behind him he is just laid down quick lap after quick lap after quick lap and speaking of quick Kellner goes back through into the lead that isn't all that much uh, as far as good as far as Toy Shed goes but we've got less than two laps left to run and Winham goes back into third place in front of York Toy Shed less than two laps left to go and the title looks a little bit further away than it was just a moment ago for the German York Toy Shed well, he's, he's got to do it. He's got to do it all in this last couple of laps, Warren. He, if he wants the championship but wants it bad enough, he is really going to have to put in... Um, well, I guess he's going to have to take some risks. He's already doing a lot of that. But uh, it's his teammate that's got a little bit more control than he's got at the moment. And Jamie Whittam is just trying so hard. Muggeridge holds off Kellner as they come around the top of the circuit and up towards Dingle Dell. Here is... 
Christian Kellner going in front of Margar uh, sorry, Whittam back into second place. And look at York Toy Shed. Keep the power on as they come up towards Dingle Dell. It's still the Australian out in front. Casoli a long way off the pace, just riding around in fifth place and hoping against hope to see what happens here out in front. So for the moment, the scenario looks like this. Toy Shed won't have enough points at the moment to... Uh, win the championship and it would be Shambon and Paolo Casoli on 133 points each. Now looking at the points, the win so far this year, they have both won two races. So they would then go back to Ty second up the inside. He has gone past Jamie, Jamie Whittam. Whittam and into third place around Paddock Hill Bend on the very last lap. Whittam has the power down looking to drive back up the inside of him and does so. Toy Shed goes runs back. Wide, Whittam runs goes wide, Whittam. wide. Very good call, Magoo and Toy Shed is back into third place. Whittam almost got bumped off the circuit. Toy Shed only needs to finish in second place to win the championship and what a win it would be he's right there now in third place he can tell you what he's got a nice little gap over Jamie Whittam as well now surely Christian Kellner will take a look see where his teammate is and pull off the road to let Toy Shed win the championship but there's Kellner still right up there behind Carl Muggeridge Toy Shed Jeez. is there in third place I think whittam has gone. I don't think Whittam can get back on terms with York Toy Shed before this race finishes. So it's going to be very interesting to see exactly what Christian Kellner does. But he's right there in the screen of his teammate. He must know surely he's there now as they come through Dingle Dell. We've just got two more corners to go in the so night of the 2000 Whittem. World Super Sport Championship. Whittam hasn't given it up. There's Kellner. He pulls out of the way. Kellner pulls out of the way. Toy Shed holds Whittam off. Toy Shed holds Whittam off for second place around the final corner. Toy Shed is so close. Whittam driving up the inside. Toy Shed is going to get there. Young Toy Shed, you are the 2000 World Super Sport Champion. And Stefan Shambon has just watched his hopes of back-to-back -back wins fade into the sunset at Brands Hatch. What an unbelievable race. Young Toy Shed on the very last corner held off Jamie Whittam and won the title. Ruben Zaus crashed out. Ruben Zaus crashed out at Dingle Dell. I hope he didn't bring down Paolo Casoli with him. Second placings than uh, Paolo Casoli in the World Championship. There it is. It's unbelievable. Toy Shed, Casoli and Shambon. And uh, three points difference in the end. An amazing res res result. I just can't believe the championship has worked out that way. And the top four men all shared two wins each throughout the season. And if you've seen a better race in any class of motorsport than that, well then ring in, email us, phone in, fax us, do something because I want to see it on tape because that was amazing.